Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield. Um, real fun song to play. Uh, lots of guitar goodies, power chords, palm muting, uh, a little bit of barring, um, and just some groovy riffs to play. So um, let's jump right in here. On the intro, we're going to be using a little bit of palm muting, and it's only one note uh, that we're holding down here. We're just playing the root notes of these power chords here. So I'm going to be on string five, fret five. And I'll talk about the palm muting in a second. And then string six, fret five, fret seven, three, five, and then back to string five, fret five. So only one note on string five, and then the other three are on string six. the palm mute just so you can hear those notes um, so with the palm mute I'm not going to go in great detail these are cut this is covered in other videos but just using that heel of the hand right on uh, where that vibration of the string is going to stop and you're just trying to create a little bit of a muffled sound there so you're just going to position yourself on string six get just a little bit of uh, reverberation there um, so I'm using one finger for all those notes. I may not do that all the time, but it would be a recommendation uh, of mine for you to try out because you're going to be playing the full power chords in a second, and that's exactly how you're going to be moving. So you don't have to learn two different ways to move, right? I understand, like, if I need to go from string uh, 6 fret 5 to fret 7, it's easy to just put my third finger there. Um, but you're going to end up using those power chords and moving that first finger in that exact same way. So it keeps everything consistent, which is always nice. All right. So that uh, intro slash verse. I'm just going to repeat that. Then you go into the pre-chorus, which is going to be those... Uh, the power chords that accompany those root notes. So that was D, A, B, G. So it's going to be D5, A5, B5, G5, A5, D5. You're going to play that three times, I think. And then you could use this A5, but I pull over here to uh, first position, um, or just my open A5 chord, if you will, uh, to hit the palm mute uh, on the A5 chord that just kind of grows out of the pre-chorus into the chorus uh, because that next chord I have to hit is right there. So I don't have to jump. Right, so make things a little bit easier. Um, so he's going to palm mute that A5 chord for the last um, bar there, and then we jump into the chorus. The chorus is always kind of the crux for my students, um, especially if they haven't dealt with bars before or using other fingers moving around while holding a little bar. So I'm just playing 
holding down strings four, three, and two at the second fret there for my A chord. And then these two fingers, finger two and finger three, are gonna come down for the D chord or D over F sharp. Um, so finger two is landing on string two fret three and finger three is landing on string four fret four. So that's gonna be the way we start off the chorus. That's A, D, 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 and I'm pulsing my hand to get a little bit of separation between those uh, strums. Instead of getting this, right, I'm gonna pulse my hand, and I call it pulsing, just basically relaxing your fingers, not leaving the strings, but just relaxing, and you know it stops the strings, so you're able to create articulations that way, or control articulations that way. So A to D, and then it goes A5 to B5, a5, E5, A5, B5, A5. So that might feel like a little bit of a funky movement too. Um, as with anything, just make teach your hand to move small, right? If, if you start doing this and you find that your fingers are kind of recoiling back from the strings and moving way too much, it's, it's not that your hand can't do it, just teach your hand to move small, and, it, and it's that simple, right? I've done that with many of my students where I say, well, just think about moving your hand smaller. Don't just try and do it by, by force and willpower um, and just you know make it happen because it's just gonna come out big and tense and uh, more difficult to control, especially if you're trying to go at speed right out of the gate. Um, so, you know, coming from that A5, that B5, that index finger just needs to pop up to string five, and these fingers need to stay close uh, to their respective strings and frets, right? So string four, fret four, and string three, fret four. I don't want to be like this with my fingers, have them way out here, and then the movement's just going to feel kind of out of control, right? So that chorus all together. to a G5, A5, D5, and then B to A, B, 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 A, A. So all together. So that's the majority of the tune. That's what you're going to be playing for a good chunk of it outside of the uh, bridge and what I call the breakdown. So in the bridge, um, really the guitar is just doing this. Just string six, fret three, palm muting, just constant. But then the keyboard's throwing in these chords. Um, so I just put those together, right? So we have... I got my middle finger here um, sitting on string six, fret three, and I'm just gonna hold it there the entire time through the bridge. The three chords that we're gonna be playing are going to be uh, strings, this is all gonna be on strings four, three, and two, all right? So just open, uh, open four, open three, open two, which is just a G chord. And then a D5 chord, open four, string three, fret two, and string two, fret three. And then an A chord, string four, fret two, string three, fret two, and string two, fret two. So those are the chords we're playing on top of the bass note, All right? So you got a G chord, D5, and an A. Those are those chords that are being hit there, G, D, A, while this is happening. So we put those together. My middle finger is just resting gently on that fifth string and muting it so I can just strum straight through. There's my G, and then I go back to the palm muting, and then D5, and I'm going through five strings essentially there. D5, and then back to the palm muting, and then A5. So the rhythm of that is G, D, A.
using my middle finger, fingers one and three are just here kind of at the ready for me. So if you find your fingers kind of flying away, there we go again, where we're trying to instruct the hand to just stay close to the strings. Don't be worried about whether you're gonna touch other strings with these fingers. We need them there to press those strings down. If you happen to cut something off that you don't want or press something, you'll be able to fix that, right? I think people get so concerned with just, or it might just be instinctive as well. I have this finger on, so I need to keep these fingers far away and that works against you. Um, so again, on that bridge. So I have to break away from the palm mute to strum the chords. So it's getting comfortable with that hand getting off the strings to strum through the chord and then coming right back into place for that palm mute. If that feels like too much, then just do the, just do the G uh, note palm mute there, or you could just do the chords. Which will also sound great. Um, and then we have the breakdown, which is basically the same uh, kind of sequence intervallically uh, as the chorus. Uh, but with different chords. So we've got F sharp five, B five, and then G sharp five, F sharp five, B five, G sharp five. Just to put these side by side, like I said, the uh, breakdown is basically the chorus, but kind of transposed. Right, same sound. Uh, so you're gonna make that correlation. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. When we get to the very end, we're gonna have, um, this is, the very, very end of the song. A, D, D. A, D, A. G, D. A, D, D. A, D, A, G, D. That's all the riffs for the song, guys outside of the solo, of course. Um, so when the solo is going, you wanna keep playing, you're just gonna do the main riff. That's what's going on underneath the solo. Um, and then also another word of caution, to just listen to the song uh, so you can piece together um, the form, right? There's gonna, there, it almost happens in every single song where we get the majority of our riffs down or all of our riffs down but then there's little um, adjustments to the music, you know, maybe coming out of the chorus the second time or going into the bridge, there's just these other little chords thrown in or repeated, uh, repeated segments. So like for instance, one of those is the chorus um, is going as normal and then it goes to the G. G, A, and D there, but it doesn't wrap it up immediately. It repeats that, so it goes. All right, so little things like that, but really fun song to play. Um, this is one of my students' favorites. Everybody gets excited about it, and they, they really get a lot out of it as well. So um, I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.